What's up, my egg hunters? You expected J2 No Damage Part 3 to come out because of that poll that I made recently. Well, too bad! Today, we're going to be reviewing Egg Hunt 2018, The Great Yolk Tales. Egg Hunt 2018, The Great Yolk Tales, considered by the Roblox community to be the best egg hunt ever. Personally, it's not my favorite, but I still do very much like this egg hunt. Now, I am aware that the fan-made Egg Hunt 2022 is out, but I will most likely not be reviewing this egg hunt for the reasons I'm gonna put on screen. Speaking of future Egg Hunt reviews, I will most likely review Egg Hunt 2019 sometime in May or so. Now, back on topic, what is Egg Hunt 2018? Simple, the 2018th installment of the Egg Hunt series, being the 9th to ever be made. Now why is this Egg Hunt so special? Because it has a story, I guess. I don't know, it's unique though. But why is it unique? Okay, I'm stalling this intro. Back to the important things. Actually, I have nothing more to say, so let's start with the gameplay section. So this icon actually has a story that we have to follow and multiple worlds. I will go into detail about each world and its subworld. Oh yeah, this icon also has subworlds along with the main worlds, so it shows that the developers really did put a lot of time into this icon. Anyways, let's stop stalling and finally talk about the first world, Ruined Library, or the lobby. Now this lobby is extremely well made. I love the detail put in it, and it's incredible that they made it this good. But let's talk story. When you first enter the library, it's perfectly fine, not ruined at all. But then this egg thing, which actually appears in Egg Hunt 2019 as an actual egg, does some evil things, I think, and then Bird gets possessed. Then the whole library goes crazy. After making it to the storage place, you get trapped in it, so you have to go through this tutorial, which explains the controls of this game. Yeah, this game has advanced controls. There's double jumping, wall jumping, zip lining, and more. I love this addition as it makes the icon feel less like a walking simulator and more like a fun, fast paced 3D platformer. No other icon has extra movement apart from Abyssal Plains in Econ 2017, but we don't count that. After completing the tutorial world, you get the Inkwell egg, and the egg hunt starts. You have to collect all the eggs before it's too late or something. The story doesn't matter too much, but I like the detail they put into it. It makes the egg hunt better. Now let's talk about the first actual world. Wonderland Grove. Now this world and design is amazing looking. I love the way it looks. The building looks very good and it has lots of details and small easter eggs. Although this is a double edged sword since this world lags heavily on lower end devices, including my old crappy laptop. But let's talk eggs. Now the first egg I will talk about is the Painted Rose Egg. To get this egg, you have to go in this maze and find the King of Hearts. He will tell you that you need to paint roses or something, so you do that. Now you have to complete a small minigame where you have to throw tomatoes at the white roses. But your cursor is moving around a little bit, so it's not super easy. After you have thrown it at 6 roses, then you get the egg. Congrats. Also, can I just say something? This egg looks nothing like an actual egg, and this seems to be a common issue with a good majority of the eggs in this egg hunt. The next egg is the Yolker egg. When you have to guess in which cup the ball is, this is a pretty fun and easy egg. There's also the teacup egg, a randomly spawning egg. I don't like these too much, but other people seem to enjoy them. And let's talk about the most important egg, the treasured egg of Wonderland. To get this egg, you had to invite 15 people to a party. This can range from just finding them to doing small side quests. And if you crash, well, all your progress gets lost. I don't really like this egg, but I like how you have to explore the map to find the depths of the egg hunt. This objective is decent, and the design for the egg is pretty good. This world is good as well, but it's a little too bright for me, I guess. Wait, I forgot. There are subworlds in this game. Well, let's talk about this world's subworld Merlin Swamp. This subworld is the largest of all the subworlds, but I won't cover these for too long. This subworld also has my favorite song in this egg hunt, Mystery Water. There are three eggs in this world, so since this world is so small, let's talk about all of them. The first egg you'll probably get in this world is the Alligator. It's a randomly spawning egg. It's also not an egg, it doesn't even resemble one. We also have the Good Night Egg. Ah, you see, now that's a good pun. To get it, you have to ram into it a few times. A fairly mundane, but annoying quest. 
And last but not least, the dragon. To get this egg, you have to get pieces of armor and fight a dragon. At launch, it was annoying to get this egg for people, but I didn't have any trouble with it because I played a little after launch. This egg is interesting though, even though it was broken. But let's talk about the next real world. Easterbury Canals This world is interesting as it gives me Italian vibes, more specifically the city of Venice. You have the stereotypical Italian music, the Venice-inspired map, and more I guess. What about the eggs? Eh, you decide. Let's first talk about the feast egg, my favorite egg in this world. To get it, you had to cook some burgers for people and serve them, and have a minimum of a free star review. This egg was fun to get, I like it. Then the weird sugar crystal egg. To get it, you had to complete this obby, grab this weird blue ice thing, and return it to the candy store lady. Why is there even an ice cake system down under your ice cream shop? Then the important treasured cuisine egg. First you have to set up a table for this fat guy, then you have to go to Billy Bonka and he'll say oh no, egg machine broke or something. Then you have to make sub-zero ice cream in the ice cream shop and go back to Billy. He's too lazy to put the ice cream in the machine, so you have to do it yourself. Once you do all of that, go back to the mayor and tell him about the news. And yay, you get the egg. And the egg chub. It rolls around on the spawn island and you have to catch it. I got it because of my umbrella skills. Anyways, now the sub world. Stein's Basement This world has one egg. To get it, you had to trap this horrifying rat in a cage three times, which was pretty easy. This world was not too fun because the rat kept glitching. Moving on to the next world, the Hard Boiled City. This was probably my favorite world. The building and atmosphere are amazing. The music is also very good, which is common but still can't be ignored. I love the theme of this world as well, it being a crime infested urban city theme. Now what were my favorite eggs? Well the first egg I will talk about is the garbage egg, where you have to collect 5 pieces of garbage and put them in this incinerator. Now you have to go into the incinerator and get the egg as fast as you can and gg you got it. Next up we have the egg capone. To get it, you have to do a little obstacle course and get some clothing. This isn't a tutorial, I don't have to be specific. The egg itself looks really nice, and maybe could make an actually good agent outfit. And let me be honest with you, this egg here looks more agent related than anything from Egg on 2020, which is a bit disappointing. Overall, this egg is pretty good. Then we have the most important egg, the hard boiled treasure egg. To get it, you first have to talk to this police officer or sheriff or whatever, he will tell you that some criminals robbed this artifact and you need to save it. Typical egg hunt objective. You have to investigate the museum that the artifact was robbed from and you will have a note. These criminals, being very strategic, left a note that said their exact location. Then you have to not die by these gunshots and talk to this guy, who will tell you the location of the mafioso of the criminal thing. Then you have to go to him and arrest him or something. Now go to this police officer guy who will tell you that one of the informants knows about the location of Don Padini, who has this artifact I think. And this part of the objective can take you either a few minutes or half an hour, depending on your luck. Now go back to the police officer and tell him about the good news, and he will give you the egg. This egg was extremely fun to get and was interesting, you being a detective for clues and eventually restoring it. I also like the look of the egg, easily being the best treasured egg, although I don't like the informant quest because all of them just look the same. Oh god, that actually kind of sounds racist. Now let's talk about the subworld. Festival of Eggs. This world, well, doesn't have a fun egg objective, but I like the building effort in this world. To get the only egg in this world, which is a sugar egg by the way, you had to collect 15 tickets and activate 8 cannons. Collecting the tickets was kind of fun, I mean I don't remember all the locations even though I did this egg 4 times, but I still did it pretty easily. I don't really have much to talk about apart from this is a sugar egg, these were only available in 2012. Now let's talk about the ruins of Wukong. 
This world is in a South American rainforest holding a Native American tribe and ancient ruins throughout. This world is not really my favorite, so uh, yeah. It also doesn't have the best music, but let's talk about the good egg. The first egg that's interesting is the Dance Dance Egg Evolution, which is a parrot for some reason. To get this egg, you had to play Osumania. GG, you got the egg, but why is it a parrot though? Then next is the Idle Egg, where you have to grab it, but hold your horses because you still have to do an Indiana Jones thing. After you get this idol, not an egg, but an idol, but not super, super idol, idol, just an idol. I got another egg, but it's not too interesting. So let's just skip straight to the treasured egg, or the treasured egg of the Wukong jungle. So first talk to this guy and guess your way to victory, because the decals are broken. Then collect some fruit and go to this waterfall, where you will find a key. This key will allow you to enter the boss fight arena. This boss fight was rather boring since all you had to do was spam click and spam shift so you don't die from the arrows, but nonetheless I managed and got the egg. Pretty fun egg, but it's a bit weaker compared to the other treasured eggs we covered. Oh, and speaking about boss fights, there is a subworld with a boss fight as well, so that's cool. It's Ruins of Wukong's subworld, the Return of the Rabbit. So in this world, you have to fight a boss, and that's it. But this boss is a twist, because this is Rabbit Rabbit from Egghunt 2014. This world isn't really that interesting, but I like the inclusion of an old boss. The egg you get from this world is also a reference to an old Roblox event no one talks about. And finally, the final world of this event, the Underness. This world is, uh, interesting. This is Amors, or the bird we saw in the beginning, Lair or something. The world itself gives off a theme of the end, and that's what this world was going for. The music also adds so much to it. So let's take a look at this world's eggs. The first egg you'll probably find is the radio egg. It looks cool. Then we have the spider egg. This egg looks pretty sh**, but the objective isn't that bad. Basically, it's temple run, but very short. But hey, it was fun, I think. Next up is the Egg of Dark Nest. To get this egg, you need to grab this crystal and do this really dark obstacle course. The reason you need the crystal is to light up the cave. But it doesn't light it up too much anyway. The egg itself looks amazing. I like it, and the objective is pretty average. And the final egg you can get, the Newton's Third Law of Eggs. To get it, you had to go through some zip lines. Even though this was my least favorite egg, this egg is pretty fun to get, since you can see the entire world going through the zip lines. And the egg itself looks average, I guess. Now the big stuff. Oh, wait, there's one more subworld? Well, let's cover this quickly Blizzard Valley and the Prez Egg. Kinda annoying to get. The last badge I got for Echo 2018 is the badge for completing this quest without any misses. Bad. Okay, now for the real deal. Amor's Lair. I hope you've been collecting those treasured eggs because you will need them to access this world. The boss fight itself was... good? So first off, you have to plant three dynamite next to Amor. Okay, cool, that was easy. But then it goes from zero to 100 real quick. Amor starts shooting lasers at you, which are uh, well balanced. Now you have to grab this dynamite that randomly falls from the sky. You have to use this dynamite to go in these barrels and hit Amor to explode him and take damage in the process. Once you do this like two to three times, you will move on to phase three. In phase three, you have to again use dynamite and put them in these crystals, which will make a beam of light according to their color, and that will apparently kill Amor. This boss fight doesn't really make much sense, but it was kind of fun. For completing all of this madness, you get the Amek, which looks pretty pleasing. Now, Booker turns back into a person, forgot to mention he turned into a worm in the beginning, and Amor goes back to normal. And that's the end. Apparently there's a sixth world to this, aka Fractured Space. 
To even access it, you first need to defeat Amor, and then you need to collect 15 puzzle pieces across all the different worlds, and it's 15 because 15 made it, haha, <laughs> I get it. These puzzle pieces are kind of boring to get, with most of them just involving you mindlessly going to the specific location. But finally, once you collect these puzzle pieces, you can get to the world. This world is, uh, interesting to say the least. It's basically a whole bunch of unused assets for this icon, so that's epic. This whole world is an obstacle course to get the 50 meg, which itself looks pretty nice. It was actually kind of sad to play this world because this is, for the second time, the end of this egg hunt. This world is really good despite the weird design choice. The music is also amazing and is one of my few favorites. So why are you here? There's more? Okay, let's see. The Mirage. What? Oh yeah, Icon 2019. Uh, I won't cover any of the other worlds, mainly because they are from different events, like the Office of Creators or the Mirage. So uh, no, I won't be covering them today. So let's finally talk about the bonus eggs? So this is hopefully the final segment in this review, aka the bonus eggs. There are a lot of them this year, so let's cover some of them. First, the Egg-fection. To get it, you had to touch someone with the egg. Wow, so epic. And the admin egg of this year is uh, quite ugly. What even is this? This is probably my least favorite admin egg of like the six that exist. Now let's talk about another collect thing across all the worlds egg. You have to get these crayons and get this bag thing and talk to this lady and you get the DIY egg. Which looks fine I guess, I mean it's a DIY egg so it can't be that good. Anything else? Uh, another collect thing across all worlds for egg egg? The stained glass egg or something. This is technically for the Ready Player One event, but it still counts. Basically, you have to collect cubes or something, and some of them are really annoying to get. Like this carrot one where you have to turn some numbers into binary. How do people even find out about this sort of stuff without a tutorial? Even I wouldn't think of this. The egg lo itself looks pretty good, but it's so tedious to get that I'm not even going to get footage of me getting the egg. Now, is there more? Uh, of course there is. How could we forget about the Fabergé? To get it, you had to collect a lot of eggs. I got this Fabergé on Easter, so perfect timing. The Fabergé is the best Fabergé we have gotten so far. It looks superb and I like the Roblox logos on it and the wings. I also like the color pattern, it looks nice. So yeah, that's it. Uh, apart from this weird sugar egg Torco that nobody cares about, yeah, we are finally done. So let's finally move on to the pros and cons. Yay! Ah yes, the pros and cons. Unsurprisingly, there will be more pros, so let's go over them right now. The worlds in this egg hunt are spectacular. The building is admirable, and the small easter eggs really add to the experience. The objectives for most of the eggs are also well made and fun to complete. It's a good balance between randomly spawning eggs and objective-based eggs. The movement is the best out of any egg hunt in comparison to Nintendo 3D platformers. The boss fights in this egg hunt are amazing. While most of them are simple, they were enjoyable to play through. The sheer amount of worlds is astonishing, with there being 7 worlds and 5 subworlds. There is quite a lot to unpack. The music is the best OST out of any egg hunt and sits with some of my favorite video game OSTs. Yes, even among games like Plants vs Zombies and Doki Doki Literature Club. Fractured Space is one of the most unique worlds I've seen out of any egg hunt or Roblox game for that matter. And lastly, some small details that round this egg hunt up from amazing to outstanding, like the treasured eggs concept, Amor's design, the egg pedestals, the speedrun feature, and way more. Now for the cons. Believe it or not, the quote unquote perfect egg hunt has its flaws, so let's go over them quickly. Some of the egg designs, man. For example, the painted rose egg, the alligator, the eggman 2018, the club skewer, and way more. The saving bugs. I had many issues doing the eggs where you had to go across multiple worlds because your progress just wouldn't save, and this was an issue even back then as far as I remember. The dragon egg backpack is an underwhelming egg hunt item. The money used from 2017 and the wings from 2019 were much better and served a better purpose. The backpack just gets in the way of gameplay. Although a nitpick, there were way too many eggs where you have to travel across every world to do tedious tasks. I understand maybe one or two, but there are four! It gets annoying after a while. Unsurprisingly enough, it was harder to think of cons for this section, and in fact, when thinking of cons, I thought of even more pros. Shows just how good this egg hunt really is. So, we're finally here. 
what do I even say? Despite me sounding angry at the amount of content of this egg hunt, I actually enjoyed that extra content. It's pretty crazy how much effort they put into this perfect Roblox event, and that they are still maintaining this egg hunt. Even though it does take like months for bugs to be fixed, but I mean hey, at least it's better than Egg Hunt 2017, right? I am very happy with this event, and something I am very happy about that I forgot to mention in this entire review is the music. While I did talk about it, I really do vibe to the music sometimes when I'm bored. The building in this game is also just, wow, it's too much. Although there were some bugs, they were pretty minor, and when I played, these bugs were already fixed. And the eggs also look very good. Maybe not all of them, but some are very good and can make some good avatars. So that's Egg Hunt 2018 for you. I give it an 8.5 out of 10. The eggs could use some work, but other than that, it is very good. I also give it bonus points for having amazing music, but nothing is better than Egg Hunt 2017. So now I'm going to go insane editing again. Woohoo! Join my Discord server again, even though I am dead on Discord right now. But anyway, remember everyone, stay in school, don't do drugs, and don't forget to wash your hands. For some reason, I wrote that in the old script. I'll see you in the next one.